Thomas Sankara. Mm, may he so rest in peace. Sankara took over power at the age of 33 after a bloodless military coup. The first thing that Sankara did was to reduce the salaries of all the ministers and all public officials, including his own salary. He took away their luxurious cars, Mercedes-Benz at the time, and he made them drive regular cars. He himself was driving and um, what do you call this thing? Okay, that, that thing, that was what he was driving. Anyway, no more first class. All officials had to fly economy. Not a single special preference was left for these officials. He put an end to colonial taxes and embedded in his people to stand against colonial mentality. He took care of food. He took care of housing. He took care of health care for his people. At that time, several African countries were dealing with disease epidemics, but not in Burkina Faso because he provided vaccines for polio, miso, and meningitis. In one week alone, two and a half million people were vaccinated. His government was the first African government to publicly recognize the AIDS epidemic as a major threat to Africa. He was also one of the first head of states in the whole world to promote women's rights. Yes, the very first African leader to appoint women to major cabinet positions. Take a look. Ce qui veut dire que nous devons donner à chaque femme un emploi. Nous devons donner à chaque femme le moyen de gagner honnêtement et dignement sa vie. Yes, he stood against forced marriages, underage marriages, or even expelling women from school if they got pregnant. He was like, if you have to expel the girl, what about the boy that got her pregnant? I was like, God bless you, my brother. Ah, she didn't do it by herself now. Thank you, Jared. He also instituted mass sporting activities. Everybody had to become active and participate in sports in order to keep fit and healthy. That was Sankara playing basketball, you know. Uh, people were riding bicycles and he had a campaign then that healthy body and healthy mind would reduce diseases. He also took environmental issues very seriously and insisted that they plant a million trees in order to encourage reforestation. God knows that we need that right now in so many places in northern Nigeria. He also constructed vast roads and railways and connected all the major cities together. At that time they didn't have much money in Burkina Faso but instead of relying on foreign aid he told everybody to take part and people were so glad to take part in building the railways and the roads. He actually discouraged his people from relying and depending solely on foreign aid. He also insisted that Burkinabe produce their own goods and everybody, including officials, had to patronize Burkinabe products. Yes, yeah, so clothes, food, everything all made in Burkina Faso. They were producing their own food, wheat, and um, he facilitated good irrigation and fertilization programs. People started seeing made in Burkina Faso products just within four years that he was president. And in less than four years that he was in power, Burkina Faso that used to be very poor, this same Burkina Faso became food self-sufficient. I'm telling you, it was a major revolution at that time. Corrupt officials were tried in court. And the funny thing was, no lawyer was allowed to represent them. So you had to prove yourself guilty or not guilty in front of everybody. And it was televised. So a lot of people were disgraced by this approach because they were not allowed to pay lawyers to represent or defend them and he was only like 33 34 just imagine that by the way Burkina Faso was named the Republic of Upper Volta at that time by the French yeah the colonial masters Sankara was the one that renamed it as a Burkina Faso which means the land of upright men he also commissioned several housing projects for the less privileged and he was out among his people always you know relating with people he was not untouchable you know how Nowadays, our leaders in Africa, they have this long convoy following them and you have, everybody has to get out of the way. No, Sankara was never like that. He related with anybody and everybody. This man took Burkina Faso out of misery in less than four years. Less than four years. Of course, the French, yeah, did not like that uh, they were losing grief of their former colony because he stopped borrowing money and he stopped relying on their foreign aid. And they wanted to make sure that other African countries don't follow his footsteps. You get what I'm saying? In fact, all those that were benefiting from Africa's underdevelopment at that time, they were not happy to see Burkina Faso rising, becoming self-dependent. So guess what they did? They sponsored his very best friend from childhood to overthrow him. I'm talking about Blaise Compore, the same man that has ruled Burkina Faso for the last 26 Seven years. So on October 15, 1987, Sankara was killed by Compore's armed men. How ironic that uh, Blaze himself was overthrown in the month of October. Just imagine what a coincidence. Compore's men killed Sankara 
and 12 other officials with a shower of bullets that dismembered Sankara's body completely. So they hurried and buried him in an unmarked grave, you know, like a goat. There was no ceremony for Sankara's burial. They treated him like, like an animal. His wife and two children had to flee the country and Akampore immediately reversed nearly all of Sankara's policies. He was never repentant, by the way. He actually pretended that um, he was not the one behind the whole thing. The only thing he said was that, well, Sankara had jeopardized foreign relations with uh, former colonial masters in France. I was like, what? That, that's the reason for you to kill the guy? Kompore rejoined the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and he went right back to being a puppet in the hands of France. And once again, what would have led to true self-dependency and freedom in Africa was quenched by this man. You know, the question is, would we learn a lesson from Burkina Faso? I mean, all the African countries where corruption is being celebrated today, can we learn from the Burkinabes? All the countries that have dictators in power, when will you guys have your own revolution? But you know, as much as I admire Thomas Sankara, the man whose legacy will never die, uh, you know, it actually reminds me of the fact that in Africa, we kill those we should celebrate and we celebrate those we should get rid of. The sad thing is, we never really appreciate those that are advocating for change until they are gone. To be honest, not many Nigerians celebrated Fela Anikula Kokuti when he was alive. <laughs> no, not many people celebrated him at that time. Uh, when would we learn to recognize great minds, you know, before they die or before they are killed? People like Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Ediado Modlain, Amilka Cabral, Steve Biko, Samora Marshall, and of course, John Garang. You know, it's very sad because many of our children don't even know who these people are. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to my people in Burkina Faso. 